Okay, we're going to continue here with our discussion of the processing programming language, um, doing some more on on drawing and and how we do drawing. And uh, the first thing I'm going to mention here is this idea of drawing modes. And <clears throat> the idea with drawing modes is that uh, uh, changes what the numbers mean when we put them into a drawing command, such as ellipse or rectangle. So when we've looked at the ellipse drawing mode, we've seen that the first two numbers in the ellipse drawing mode are for the coordinates of the center of the ellipse, and the second two numbers uh, determine the radius in the x direction, the radius in the y direction. Okay, for example. Now we can change what those numbers represent by changing the drawing mode for the ellipse. And um, that's explained right here, um, uh, the corner mode. And that if we say ellipse mode corner, what that does is it changes the first two numbers to define uh, the upper left-hand corner of the square that encloses the ellipse rather than defining the position of the center of the ellipse. So up, but um, so that's illustrated in this diagram. So let me let me draw that right here so you can see. Um, okay, let me just copy this here right here and put it into my um, sketch window. So here we go right here. Here's size of the of the window. We're going to draw a rectangle. Uh, the upper left hand corner of the rectangle is 12060. We draw an ellipse. The center of the ellipse is 12060. Here and let me just comment out these lines right here for no, oh, let me just delete them there. Okay, I'll delete these lines right here. Okay, so let me run this. I do, and you see, here we go, here's the ellipse, in this case a circle, and here is the rectangle, in this case a square. And you can probably approximately make out that the upper left hand corner of the square is the same as the center of the circle, which is how the ellipse and the rectangle mode are originally defined. Now if we change ellipse to corner mode and then rerun it so let me just let me just change that right here by typing in um, ellipse corner so I'll just t take this copy go up here and just paste there so here's ellipse corner right there and let's see how that changes so here we go here is what's happened is we have now changed these two numbers rather than representing the center of the ellipse now represent the square enclosing the ellipse and are the coordinates of the upper left hand corner of the square which is the same thing as this rectangle right here okay so an example of what corner mode means for uh, drawing an ellipse. Now why do we have these different modes? Because sometimes when we're doing more complicated graphics in the uh, in, in processing, uh, making animated graphics for example, um, it sometimes can be easy to um, change what these numbers represent rather than doing a computation to compute a new number and putting it in the uh, in the command box. So we're running, we're plotting an ellipse and it turns out for whatever reason the coordinate of the upper left hand corner of the ellipse box uh, comes naturally out, out of writing the program. So rather than do a calculation to convert from that to the center of the ellipse, we just put that number directly in and then continue on. So uh, 
that's the idea here is by changing these modes sometimes we can make uh, writing the program just a bit simpler okay now something that we haven't talked about at all up until this point is color now if you have been doing uh, work in Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator uh, you are you've been using color for sure and you know that uh, these programs typically uh, represent color in RGB red green blue so we have a number to represent uh, red intensity another number to represent green intensity and a third number to represent blue intensity so by defining these three numbers we determine the color that actually gets displayed and um, so here is a map here that il illustrates that a bit now let me just point out here something again if you've used uh, Adobe Photoshop uh, you know that um, typically the colors are represented uh, in 8 bits and in JPEG for example JPEG photographs are the colors each individually are represented by 8 bits we have 256 levels of red 256 levels of green 256 levels of blue and the total number of color levels that can be represented is 256 times 256 times 256 256 cubed so and the these those 256 values go from 0 to 255 so 0 being the first value and the number 255 is in fact the 256th value so here we're showing some examples of what how different colors uh, can be represented uh, so the red green and blue number for different colors is represented right here so you see uh, how we can uh, run through this whole selection of different colors. you might actually want to keep this handy it could be helpful uh, in writing programs if you have specific colors for example if you want to have a, a sky blue sky determine which one of these colors represents a sky blue that you want to use and then use these numbers right here uh, and then we can actively change a color in a program by having variables represent these numbers and then changing the values of the variables okay so we'll be using this a little bit more this idea of colors we'll be using it more as we go along here okay now grays um, grays um, are like colors uh, except a typical gray level is a number which represents uh, which is represented by three equal values of colors uh, so uh, for example uh, the background we say background zero which is a gray level of zero which is black would be a, the color zero 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 red zero green and zero blue and then we can fill the background using the fill command so here let, and let me represent that right here um, uh, let me just use grab these two numbers right here these two lines and show you let's go back over here okay so um, we're gonna draw a box and fill it with black so there we go now I can draw a box and fill it with white by going 255 let me run that there we go and I can draw a box and fill it with a medium gray 128 run there's a medium gray and then I can fill it with a dark gray a darker gray let's say 75 there or a light gray I can put let's say 200 there so just putting one number there automatically gives us a gray level it fills in all three colors with the same number 
and um, so that's uh, this whole that's what these this little line of code represents first we're going to draw ellipse notice we put fill before we put the ellipse command so this tells us what the ellipse is going to be filled with so let me just grab this here copy there we go and run it so background is zero and we're doing a fill 204 but we're not giving it anything to fill so to give it something to fill we'll give it the ellipse command put that right here and then run it so there we're drawing an ellipse with this center these are the radii and it's filled with color 204 which is a light gray there we go we can make that white completely white by making it 255 there we go so you see how that's working right there okay so these just represent three now the when we have drawn shapes the shapes have always been drawn with an outline and with a stroke there's a stroke now we can eliminate the outline and just draw a shape with a color and no outline and um, so that's what this section is about control fill and stroke so let's look at uh, let's look at these uh, these lines of code right here okay so here's our box we're filling the background 153 with uh, kind of a uh, medium gray we draw an ellipse right here so the drips the the drips <laughs> the ellipse is not filled with any color at all so when we run that um, let's see let me just eliminate the, these lines right here there we go and we just draw this let's just see what that is so um, uh, here no the ellipse yeah the ellipse is filled with 153 and uh, notice there's no background here um, what I mean is we haven't defined a color in the background it's automatically defined as a light gray I could change that background I could type uh, background B A C K G R O U N D D. Let me do background the same color as the fill, 153, like that. Now, oh, you see, I made an error. I forgot to put a semicolon. And this is telling me I'm giving an error, expecting semi found fill, whatever. So I have to put that semicolon in there now run there so here's the background is exactly the same color as the fill on the ellipse and uh, let me make that a little bit lighter let me make it 200 there so here's a the background there here's the ellipse the first ellipse in this okay now Let me draw, put in the other lines here. Here, these lines right here. Now let me just put them all in here. The way it is there. there. Copy. Okay, here we go. Well, what's going to happen here? Well, first we draw that first ellipse. Then we put no fill. And then we draw. So the first ellipse here has fill with this. This ellipse. Here, let me pull this line down here. I want that down there. So no fill. So this ellipse is drawn. Um, 
without any fill, and that's going to be this right here. So it's transparent. Um, you can look, see right through it to everything that's behind it with no fill. It's not white, not black, not gray. There's no fill at all. See right through it. Now, but you can see the stroke that defines the ellipse. Now if I type no stroke, then you can't even see on the next ellipse, you can't even see the perimeter of the ellipse. So this ellipse is drawn, but you can't see it at all because there's no boundary and it's completely transparent with no fill. Now, if I moved no stroke up right after size, so let's see what happens there. No stroke. I'll take that out. And then right after size right here, let me put no stroke. And now run. So there's no boundary on this ellipse. The second ellipse, where we can only see the boundary, disappears because the boundary has gone. And then, of course, the third ellipse, which was already transparent, is gone. So that's an example of no fill, no stroke. And then um, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to talk about drawing with color. I'll do that on the next video, but a little preview here. Um, uh, here with this example, we have no strokes, so we're not drawing a boundary. But here we're defining our backgrounds and our fills with red, green, and blue values. So that's what we're going to talk about next. And um, so I'll see you then.